What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. So we're going to be talking about the Strangers trilogy in this video here again today. And I'm going to be talking about Rennie Harlan's comments on Bloody Disgusting slash film and comic book. Mostly slash film and comic books. Those are the two most recent ones I'm going to be talking about. And I'll leave links to both articles in the description. But it would appear that we have another cinematic universe possibly on our hands. Now, I do want to start off by firstly again addressing that I thought that the clip that came out over the weekend from New York Comic Con, I thought it was solid enough and effective as it was, an adequate enough clip to release. Could they again have released something better? Sure. Is it completely full of suspense? No. But what was captured and what was shown and Madeline's performance, to me, was enough to start showing how they were letting you get immersed and become curious about what's on the other side of that door, the music chiming in, and then just allowing all of those things to really hone in on the terror of it all. Maybe it's going to be more effective in complete context when we see the movie, obviously, but I like how they were relying on mostly those aspects rather than just having cheap jump scare tactics. Not to say that it was completely immersive, but it was very immersive compared to some of the other things that come out that rely on cheap jump scares also the poster that came out there's actually two posters that came out i think these are some pretty cool posters that have come out over the weekend as well you guys can let me know what you think about the clip what do you think about the poster down in the comment section below but starting off with the comment he made with slash film Rennie Harlan says, so the opportunity, the chance of a lifetime to take a film that you love, be able to remake it and then answer some of those questions that I think all of us who enjoyed the original were left wondering, like, why? Who were the strangers? Why did they do this? Is this completely really random or is there something behind this or at least some reasons why somebody is a senseless, horrible serial killer? And maybe more than anything, exploring that if one of the characters in, the case, in this case, the main female character played by Madeline Pesh, if she lives through this. How does this experience of horrible, senseless violence, how does it affect a person mentally and physically? And how do you continue with your life? The chance to explore that was just too much to pass. I was absolutely determined to do this after I read the script and I said, this is just an opportunity I cannot pass by. Doing justice and doing honor to the original film was of course the most important thing. So me being a fan myself, I knew what made the first movie tick for me and I wanted to offer the same experience to the fans and to the people who are new to the whole concept. We didn't go with the sequel. We didn't explore that in any way. So for us, the original film is our Bible and our second and third movie explore the hypothetical case of what happens, what if the first movie just continued and didn't end there? What happens to Madeline Pesh's character? How did she change? What is she going to do? What's her journey from here on? Now, again, in theory, not all of that sounds bad, but when considering what made the strangers stand the test of time for a lot of horror fans, it sounds like perhaps your trilogy, the only one that people might find to be worthy of being associated with the original movie could be your first one. If you're going to spin the second and third film, maybe teetering a little bit too much on what's making those people tick rather than leaving it a mystery and letting that kind of build up and be part of their mystique that classic iconic line because because you were home if we're going to be teetering off into reasons beyond just because you were home you could be stepping on a lot of the aspects of what made that original stand the test of time that's not to say that again that the trilogy can't be great but are you missing the point of that first film i can't knock a lot of people for thinking that you are then he goes on to say this with a comic book he said thanks for asking that question because i definitely see more movies and it's almost like that's why i don't even call it a trilogy i call it the first three movies of the strangers universe and the way the third movie ends if people thought that the original movie ended in a titillating or titillating way because Liv tyler sort of gasped in the end of that and you question like did she live what happened if you thought that was thought provoking i think when the third movie ends you're like oh my god what's gonna happen now now, he did also say this with Bloody Disgusting a few days ago. He said he cannot wait to make the next three movies. Those are his specific words, uh, more or less. So I hope that he actually knows what he's doing. I'm not necessarily even excited for a Strangers universe. I think the word universe, after the announcement of Halloween Cinematic Universe and after what we already have with Marvel and DC, announcing universes like this might be just a way to overwhelm certain people 
when they see that word because of how we're already deep in a lot of universes when it comes to Marvel, DC, and the choose your own adventure that already exists with the Halloween franchise in its current state with the strangers taking a page out of cinematic universes, possibly it just sounds like you're teetering away from the purpose of that original movie. And again, that does not mean that your three movies can't be great. And the cinematic universe can't be great. They could be full of classic slasher films that I'll enjoy revisiting for many years to come. However, I'm a little on the fence because one, it seems I already know that Madeline is going to survive the trilogy. Uh, it seems that I already now know that you're going to be teetering into territory that goes against what the first movie represented and possibly even doing a inferior justice or doing a lackluster sequel to that original movie. Because apparently, keep in mind, it's in the same universe. Is this really a remake? We don't we won't know until I guess the movies come out because one of the stars I've talked about this in another video. They're telling us this is in the same universe. So are you going to be shedding light on what those strangers in that original movie were up to? If you do, that could be another strike against you. It all comes down to what does this all look like in context of what we see on our screen? If you actually do indeed start giving reasons as to who the people in the original film were, that could either backfire or it could be something great. I think what will really save this is if you just mostly rely rely on that other aspect that he's hyping up that has me excited don't dive into too much of what the strangers are who they are why they operate stuff like that little nooks and crannies of it all sure i can accept that but diving into it full force and then maybe making them some people from the dark web let's say and again it doesn't mean that it won't be well received it just feels like is that really necessary because it'll chip away at the mystique of what was presented in that original movie and you could argue that's kind of what people say happened with michael myers you kept getting installments that completely showed that they do not understand what carpenter was going for in that original movie when you want to introduce things like thorn introduce all this supernatural stuff and give us concrete answers i think you should try to preserve the mystique of the strangers and not do that rely on mostly giving us that story you were talking about secondarily a character who we explore how this impacted her where she goes from here that type of stuff i also want to just circle back really quick my comment about knowing that madeline possibly is going to survive the whole trilogy i don't mean that in a way to suggest that that means that this is going to be a poor trilogy because we know the final girl will survive the final girl actually could still end up dying i just have <laughs> reservations and i'm hesitant to even think that because of the way rennie harlan has talked about the trilogy and the outcome of the trilogy and where it could go from the trilogy um i do want to say this if anything it would at least give us a character that we can root for get behind understand where she's coming from really invest in her journey and then still go from there even if it kind of eliminates the suspense because i know she's going to survive all of the trilogy let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notification and there's a video in the description i have links to my social media accounts i'm on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course let me know if there's any movies news or reviews you like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video